Three Comrades by Eric Maria Remark. Narrated by Michael Braun. Chapter One The sky was yellow as brass, not yet hidden by the smoke from the chimney stacks. Behind the roofs of the factory, the radiance was especially bright. The sun must be just rising. I looked at my watch, not eight o'clock. A quarter of an hour too early. Still, I opened the gate and put the petrol pump in readiness. There was always a car or two passing at that hour wanting a fill. Suddenly, I heard behind me a harsh, high-pitched squeaking, like the sound of a rusty hoist being turned somewhere down under the earth. I stood still and listened. I walked back across the yard to the workshop and cautiously opened the door. A ghost stumbling about in the gloom. It had a dirty white cloth wound about its head. Its skirt was hitched up to give its knees clearance. It had a blue apron, a pair of thick slippers, and was wielding a broom. It weighed around 14 stone, and was in fact our charwoman, Matilda Stoss. I stood watching her. With all the grace of a hippopotamus, she made her way staggering among the radiators, singing in a hollow voice as she went, the song of the bold hussar. On the bench by the window stood two cognac bottles, one of them almost empty. Last night they had been full. I had forgotten to lock them away. But Frau Stoss, I protested. The singing stopped. The broom dropped to the floor. The beatific smile died away. Now it was my turn to be the ghost. Holy Jesus, exclaimed Matilda, staring at me with bleary eyes. I wasn't expecting you yet. That doesn't surprise me. Did it taste good? Sure, and it did. But this is so awkward, Herr Lokamp. She wiped her hand across her mouth. I just can't understand. Come, Matilda, that's an exaggeration. You're only tight. Full as a tick, eh? She maintained her balance with difficulty and stood there blinking like an old owl. Gradually, her mind became clear. Resolutely, she took a step forward. Man is human, Herr Lokamp, after all. I only smelled it at first. And then I took just one little nip because, well, you know, I always have had a weak stomach. And then... Then I think the devil must have got hold of me. Anyway, you have no right to lead an old woman into temptation, leaving good bottles standing about like that. It was not the first time I had caught her so. She used to come to us for two hours every morning to clean up the workshop, and though one might leave as much money lying around as one liked, she would never disturb it. But schnapps, she could smell out as far off as a rat a slice of bacon. I held up the bottles. Naturally, you've left the customer's cognac, but the good stuff, Herr Kuster's own, you've polished it all off. A grin appeared on her weather-beaten face. Trust me, Herr Lokamp, I'm a connoisseur. But you won't tell, Herr Lokamp, and me a poor widow. She unpinned her skirt. Then I'd better be going. If Herr Kuster should catch me, she threw up her hands. I went to the cupboard and opened it. Matilda. She came waddling along. I held up a rectangular brown bottle. Protesting, she held up her hands. It wasn't me, she said. Honor bright, it wasn't, Herr Lokamp. I didn't even smell it. You don't even know what it is, I suppose, said I, filling a glass. No, she replied, licking her lips. Rum. Stone Age, Jamaica. Excellent. Then how about a glass? Me? She started back. This is too much, Herr Lokamp. This is heaping coals of fire on my head. Here's old Stoss goes and mops up all your cognac on the quiet, and then you treat her to a rum on top of it? You're a saint, Herr Lokamp. That's what you are. I'll see myself in my grave before I touch a drop of it. You're quite sure, Matilda, said I, making to drink it myself. Well, all right then, she said swiftly, seizing the glass. 
One must take the good as it comes, even though one doesn't understand. Good health. It's not your birthday, I suppose. <laughs>